All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at vector surface integrals. Uh, we did scalar surface integrals in the last one. So here, instead of integrating a scalar function, we're integrating a vector field, um, but still over a surface, a two-dimensional surface in three dimensions. So you'll see some similarities with how we have to parameterize the surface and find the uh, tangent vectors for the surface and then find the cross product. Um, but then the integral itself is a little bit different. Um, the surface we are integrating for this example is part of the cone z equals square root of x squared plus y squared for uh, z between zero and three. Um, and when you do these flux integrals, you need to specify which way the surface is oriented. So most surfaces have two orientations, sort of a top and bottom or inside and outside. Um, and so this one does say it's oriented upward. That's the orientation for the surface. All right, so in step one, we're gonna find the uh, vector parametric equation R uh, with parameters U and V uh, for the surface. Uh, now, if your surface is piecewise smooth and has subsurfaces, you'd wanna do that uh, for each subsurface separately. Um, for us, it's just the uh, cone here. And so we don't have a second subsurface. Um, all right, so the parameterization of a cone is pretty well known. And so you just would look that up for this. Um, but it should sort of make sense that the uh, first two components sort of lay out the uh, a circle, right? So we have u cosine v and u sine v. So v is acting like theta, um, and so it will end up going from 0 to 2 pi. And then u is kind of like the radius of those circles, um, which increase as you move up the cone. And so u is the radius, but it's also the z component. Um, and so that will go from 0 to 3, as indicated from the directions for the problem. All right, then we find the tangent vectors that consist of partial derivatives of uh, x, y, and z with respect to u and theta. So x, y, and z are the components of your vector parametric equation. And taking partial derivatives with respect to u, uh, the derivative of u cosine v with respect to u is just cosine v. u sine v with respect to u is just sine v. And then u is 1. And then tv, derivative of u cosine v with respect to v is negative u sine v. Derivative of u sine v with respect to v is u cosine v. And then the derivative of u with respect to v is 0. All right. And then we get the cross product of these two vectors. So we find the determinant of that matrix. Uh, with the first component, 0 minus u cosine v. That gives us u cosine v. And then 0 minus negative u sine v is u sine v. Uh, and then uh, u cosine squared v minus negative u sine squared v, um, that's going to be u cosine squared plus sine squared, or just u. Uh, I forgot some negatives here, didn't I? Um, so with that first one, it was 0 minus u cosine v, right? Uh, and then with the second one, uh, there's a negative in front of the, the difference. Uh, and so we have a negative outside of before we subtract it, after we subtract it. 
So missed a couple of negatives there in my cross product. Sorry about that. All right. So then what you want to do at this point probably is sort of a validation of graphing this uh, normal vector and making sure that the normal you have here matches up with the right orientation of the surface. I mean, you could have been graphing before this. You can bring in the graphing at any point. Um, I just like to do it here. So what we'll do is go over to GeoGebra and uh, first thing we do is just graph the cone itself. So just put in z equals square root of x squared plus y squared and you get this cone. And then you can chop it off at three if you want. That's where we're going to be looking just between those x, y plane and z equals three. Um, and then that parameterization of that cross product vector isn't that helpful by itself um, because it's in terms of u's and v's. So you kind of need to pick a specific value for it. So remember that V is kind of like uh, theta, and then U is kind of like R, right? Um, and so we need to pick some point on the sphere, and then we would put in values for this, this vector. So the... The point that I picked um, is one, zero, one. And so you can see that point is on the cone. And this is when x is equal to one. So theta is zero, which means v is zero. Uh, and uh, u uh, would be one, right? Um, because u is equal to. Uh, z as well as r. So if u is 1 and v is 0, uh, then the vector or because you have to have a kind of a specific value here. So u is 1 and v is 0. Cosine of zero is one, and so you get negative one. Sine of zero is zero, and then you get zero. So you get the vector negative one, zero, one by putting in those specific values for u and v at this point. And again, I could use any point. I just picked a, a real simple point that was on there on the cone. Uh, so then I put that vector into GeoGebra, and of course, GeoGebra draws that vector from the origin. Um, and so if you go to tools, you can go down to vector from a point and then click on the vector and click on the point and it will translate it automatically uh, to go from that point. So what we're checking here is that that vector is pointing upward, right? Um, because depending on how you parameterize the surface, your normal vector might be on the wrong orientation of the surface. And so you make sure that uh, your TU cross TV is pointed in the same orientation that you want your surface. So we wanted our surface oriented, oriented upward, and this vector is pointed upward. And you'll sometimes you're referred to as upward, downward, or inward, outward, that kind of thing. Um, we have the correct orientation there. All right, moving on to... This stuff. We can do the rest of this. We do want our parameterization still. I don't think we need this anymore. And we don't need this. And the vector field itself was given at the very beginning. 
So I'll just rewrite that for us. And it's given in terms of your spatial coordinates. For us, this x, y, and z. So negative 6, x, z in the i component, i direction, negative 6, y, z in the j direction, and then z squared in the k direction. And again, you want to use the parameterization to replace x, y, and z uh, with those expressions in terms of the parameters here, u and v. And so that will give us the vector field in terms of u and v. So negative 6xz, we'll replace x with u cosine v and replace z with u. Uh, so that'll give us a u squared. And then negative 6yz, negative 6u sine v, and then z is another u, so we get u squared again. And then the z squared is just a u squared. So I've replaced x with u cosine v, y with u sine v, and z with u. And I have the vector field f in terms of u and v, the parameters. All right, we're now ready to take the dot product of uh, the vector field with the uh, result from step three, the cross product of the tangent vectors. So we're doing a dot product with these two. And so that means we're going to multiply the component-wise, and then those products get added together. So f dot tu cross tv. All right, so with the first components, we've got two negatives giving us a positive 6. u times u squared is u cubed, and then cosine v times cosine v is cosine squared v. Second components, again, two negatives gives you a positive. There's a 6. u and u squared is u cubed. Now we get sine and sine giving us sine squared v. And you're probably already seeing that that's going to just give us 6 u cubed. Uh, and then the third component's u and u squared is u cubed. So adding that, we get 7 u cubed. All right. So that dot product from step five, that's what you actually integrate. And this is the double integral of that over u and v or whatever your parameters are. So we're gonna integrate seven u cubed. We are using u and v, so du dv. If u is the first integral, right? Remember we got our limits of integration set by the inequalities for the parameters uh, when we did the parameterization. u goes from zero to three and v goes from zero to two pi. All right, so integrating with respect to u, the antiderivative of 7u cubed is 7 over 4u to the fourth. Evaluating at 3, you get 7 fourths times 3 to the fourth. Uh, 3 to the fourth is at 81. It is 81. And then 81 times 7 is 567. All right. And then you still need to integrate that uh, with respect to v from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, and so that's just going to give you 567 over 4 times 2 pi, uh, which is 567 pi over 2. And that should be our result. All right, so let's validate by uh, doing a graph of the vector field and the surface. So this is kind of a, using a, a geometric representation of the vector field and the surface and looking for what the flux might be uh, in terms of direction and order of magnitude kind of thing. Um, of course, you could validate by checking antiderivatives and and doing some other things here. Um, but I like this this validation. So we've got uh, a three-dimensional grid here for x, y, and z that'll create our vector field. 
um, do you want uh, to include where Z goes from at least zero to three, I've gone from zero to four here to get a little bit extra. Um, and then you want X and Y to also kind of go from negative three to three, um, but I've gone from negative three to four for some reason. So just make sure you're, th this is like your, your domain X, Y, and then this is the, the range. And then the one is like how often you want the, spacing there. So every unit will have one of these vectors. This is our vector field. So those are the three components of our vector field. Um, negative 6xz, negative 6yz, and z squared. And then we've got uh, the initialization for our 3D graph. Um, we've got a uh, addition of the vector field using the quiver command to draw the arrows. Um, and then we want to create the surface. So for the surface, we need to create a new grid of points for X and Y um, from negative three to three, make that into a mesh grid, and then define the function Z, which is uh, the surface uh, of the cone, right? Square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then we plot that surface on top of the same graph. All right, so we can see the cone and you can see the vector field. And what you're looking for is the flux, right? The flow of the vector field through the surface, but specifically think about the orientation of the surface, right? The orientation was upward and that says, remember we saw our, uh, color is it? We saw our sample vectors, right? Pointing upward is really pointing kind of inward. And you notice that that's the same direction that the vector field is flowing. So what that tells me is that I should be getting a positive result, right? When the vector field is flowing in the same direction as the orientation of the surface, you get a positive contribution to the flux. If it's flowing in the opposite direction of the surface, you get a negative contribution. And if they're flowing at right angles to each other, you will get zero contribution, right? Um, and if it's some mix, you need to kind of combine those, separate and combine those amounts. Um, so we see it is flowing almost uh, parallel to the orientation of the surface um, and, and in the same direction. So that would suggest that it's positive and quite large, um, which does match up with our result, right? We had a, a positive large result. Um, whereas if the orientation of the surface is the other way, we should get a, po a negative result and um, that kind of thing. Remember, the thing you're actually integrating is the dot product, right, of the normal vector of the surface with the vector field. Um, and so when that, it just follows the normal properties of a dot product. All right, uh, well, that uh validates our problem and our answer and so we are done with this uh, vector service integrals and move on to uh, looking at a couple of theorems before we close out our study of vector fields uh, so there's divergence theorem and uh is it stokes theorem divergence theorem and stokes theorem are the last two so i'll see you in those final two videos